face reality. We don't want to face reality. I, and the proof is we get drunk and we get high. That's the proof. We don't want to face reality. Why? Because it hurts. It hurts. But guess what, my people? You so-called blacks and Hispanics, so-called African Americans, you got your brothers in Israel out here to teach you so we can beat this oppression together. That's right. We're trying to show you a better way out. Why? Because you ain't the only one that's tired. Right. You ain't the only one that's tired. We just decided to face reality and ready to go to war with our enemies using the word of God. That's right. We ain't got to pick up no weapons. Give me that in 2 Corinthians. Hold that. Give me that in 2 Corinthians. We ain't got to pick up a weapon. You're going to answer my question. I'm going to get you, bro. Give me that. I want to pull, I want to pull some of my brothers and sisters out here today because that's the thing. Black Panther Party, Islam, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King. We got to ask ourselves, as black people, how did that fail us? Why did it fail us? Why are we still in the same, worse conditions than we were back then? And we have elders here that lived in that time. Why are we in worse conditions? I'll show you why. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse three. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. You wanna know why? Because we decided to war after the flesh. Black Panther Party decided to grab weapons. What happened? Shut down. Kill Huey Newton. And who else they killed? Fred Hampton, my fault. They killed Fred Hampton. They kill our people, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King. These are assassinated people, our people that was leaders for us, trying to help us out. Yep. Why didn't they weigh work? Because they use a different warfare. That's right. We can't fight yeah. the enemy that's in higher power with physical strength. They didn't use physical strength like that to beat you right you now. They you. using you against your own brothers. Right. Read. For the weapons yeah, of our warfare are, what? are not carnal. Meaning I'm not gonna pick up a gun. I can't. They got way more, they produce the ammo and the gun that I'm gonna be trying to use to kill them. That's like me going to the devil and asking the devil, hey, I know you gotta use your pitchfork, but let me use it to kill you right quick, bro. No, it ain't gonna work. Read. But mighty through God. What is our weapons mighty through? But mighty through God. God is our only weapon. Guess what that means? There's something you need to apply to yourself with God so that way you can use the right weapons to defeat your enemy. That's the only way it's gonna work. My bad, I've been holding this sign. <laughs> That's the only way it's gonna work. Only way. Go back to Deuteronomy 48. Cause I wanna show you, man. I'm not trying to argue with y'all. We need y'all to repent. That's right. Read. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Uh -huh. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, yep. which the Lord shall send against thee, Read. in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, serving our enemies for the want of everything that we need to survive. Amen. That's right. Oh, Read. Right. And in want of all things. Uh -huh. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So our enemy put a yoke of iron upon my neck. Now, the question that I really want to ask my brothers is, and my brothers and sisters, why don't we have yokes of iron on our necks right now? Riddle! Because we choose to be enslaved. Oh, here it is. Oh, wait, wait, what you say? Oh, here it is. Because we choose to be in slavery. Right, right. I like that. Read. Yokes of iron? Yokes of iron upon thy neck until. He have destroyed thee. That's right. You know why he took it off? Because the yokes are iron all here now. Amen. They don't need it on our necks no more. Mentality. They ain't got to go hunt us down from the slave quarters. You know what they going to do? Our brothers that's uh, selling drugs or whatever, he's wearing the wrong colors. I'm going to kill him. My brother just stepped in my shoes. Really? I'm going to kill him. Yeah. Why is that? My brother just sold me drugs, and he sold me the wrong amount. I'm going to kill him. Why is that? Why is that? Because of the fact that we're destroyed mentally. We don't know who we are. We lost our image. Because if I saw Christ in you, the same way we all respect Christ, I will respect you that way. That's right. Give, That's me, that, right. give me that Leviticus 19, uh, 17. I want, I want it. I'm going to show you something, bro. There's laws that tell me not to hate you. That's why we come here and I see arguing. I'm like, bro, stop it. What are you arguing for? We going to press together. We ain't no better than you just because I'm standing on a podium don't mean I'm better than you. It means I'm going through the same thing. I'm trying to tell you, wake up. That's right. That's scripture. Give me that. Go get that. Matthew. Christ what Christ said, 77. 70 70 70 70 70 yeah, 1822. Christ said the same thing. Seven Seven what Christianity what Christianity taught us is Christ did away with the Old Testament. No. Christ was just establishing it. You know what Christ did? He actually made it more clear. Because when you read, thou shalt hate thy neighbor in thy heart, you like, Hey, how can I hate my brother? No, I, my heart. Come on now. God, Christ is going to explain it. Read. Matthew chapter 18, verse 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him. So he's asking, man, my brother keep offending me. He keeps sinning against me. Meaning he's doing something that's causing harm to my spirit. How, how often?
often should I forgive my brother? Because eventually it's going to form hatred in my heart for this man. How often should I forgive my brother? Read. Till seven times? Should I just give him seven times? Seven is just a number of completion. Read. Seven times. Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. He said seventy times seven, not because it's a specific number. He said seventy times seven because it's completion time, completion, which means infinity. Always forgive your brother. Right. Let's go back to the beginning. Leviticus 19. Now we're going to go to where Christ got it from. Read. Leviticus 19, verse 17. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. This is where Christ got it from. Don't hate your brother in your heart. Always forgive your brother. Why? Because if I forgive you, bro, black on black crime can stop overnight. That's, That's right. right. Bro, you can't tell me that thought don't feel good. I ain't got one way walking to the bank and one with my brother robbing me. My brother might help me and give me to pay my life bill too. How does that feel? That thought right there? We can't even fathom that. We can't even imagine that. You want to know why? You want me to you prove to you why we can't imagine that? How many of us is going to government asking for a, supply, a supplication from them right now? That's the proof that we don't even depend on each other. We're afraid of each other because we kill each other. We harm each other. We hate each other. But what I'm trying to show you from God is that it's not supposed to be that way. Right. And God even said it. Read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. I'm supposed to correct you. If you're not raising your child right, bro, come on, man, I'm gonna help you get a job. Let's get it together so we can, we can, get, we can get this family going. You ain't gotta sell drugs. But I can't do that if you're in the mindset of, you know what, you, you just trying to tell me what to do. You just trying to run my life, man. You just trying to do, we can't be like that. That's actually hate. Your brother's just trying to show you the better way to live so you don't gotta suffer no more. That's right. Because he might have suffered the same way and trying to show you not to go through what he went through. But your right. brother is not gonna make $2,000 a week on a job. And you know what? You are absolutely right. He's but hold on, hold on. You're absolutely right. right. But let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go get 12. A job. If 12 people give you $20, I guarantee you'll be able to pay a bill. Yeah. But I'm talking about $2,000 a week. Hold on, hold on. But you get what I'm saying? Give me we, a job, What I'm saying, this is what I'm saying. Am I wrong? If all of us got together, just this group of people right here, and gave $20 each to you. But they're not going to do that. But I'm, this is what I'm saying. If, hold on, this is what I'm saying. If they did that, would it help you? Stop. That's the point. That's the point. Read that for First Corinthians, chapter 3 and verse 16. I want to deal with something that we've done that's continuing to plague our community. Read. No, ye not that he hold on, you want to get it. I want, if you got a Bible, go ahead and do what you got to do. Get your Bible. I prefer you to read along so you can't say I'm just talking out the side of my neck. Get your Bible and study. Why? Because at the end of the day, I am not Christ. I am not your Savior. What I am is your brother trying to teach you so that we can go together and rule the name. That's right. Read. First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Read. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. You are the temple. The temple was destroyed. Christ did away with the temple. All the sacrificial laws. You are not a temple. Guess what that means? The laws are supposed to abide in you. Right. Because what happened in the temple? They kept the laws. They brought them there in the temple. Right? They did the sacrifice. The Levites. Stuff. Guess what? Who's the temple now? You. That means the laws are supposed to be in you. Everything that God tells you to do in the Bible is supposed to be in you. Read about that temple. Is that the spirit of God dwelleth in you? All right. Read. If any man defile the temple of God, mm -hmm. him shall God destroy. Now we're going to read that part again, but hold that. It says, if any man defile the temple of God, meaning this temple, if you harm this temple, God will Your destroy temple. you. That's what's wrong with our brothers and why they get cancer, why they get all the pneumonia, why they get all these different types of disease. You realize there's a different type of cancer all the time, like almost every single year. You know what they're doing? They're creating different cancers. And guess where that cancer is at? It's sitting in your marijuana that you're trying to hide. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. No, I'm going to tell you. It's worse, bro. That marijuana, that has cancer in it now. Why you think they spread pesticides and all that stuff on it now? Guess what? It's killing us. I bro, believe it or not, before, we weren't smoking marijuana. Even when we was in Africa, we weren't smoking marijuana. When we got here in America, that's when we started smoking marijuana. And guess what happened to us? If any man... Defile the temple of God. So if you harm, if you do anything that can cause harm in the temple, whether it be smoking, over drinking, that's why he tells you how much to drink, whether it be using medicine for the wrong reason, because there's pain pills that's supposed to help you. But some people take them pain pills for the wrong reason. Yeah, I do. I ain't gonna lie, I know, I know. Hey, but that's what I'm trying to tell you. Look, bro, you ain't the only one. Don't feel, bro, I was in your same situation. Bro, all of us, we can attest. 
Titus 3 and 3. Here you go. I'm gonna show you the scriptures, bro. Hey, the Bible answers all of our questions, bro. Right? Everything right. that we did, going to do, and have thought about doing, God already talked about. Right. right. Give me that. Titus chapter 3 and verse 3. I'm gonna show yeah. you, bro. I was in that position. I used drugs for the wrong reasons, but I changed. That's the difference. I did sin, but I'm trying to stop it. I'm trying to find out where's my sin so I can fix it. I got you, bro. Let's deal with this first. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. Read. And now, Israel. What are we supposed to do? Read. What does the Lord thy God require of thee? Now, the conversation we're supposed to be having is what are you supposed to be doing for God? Read. Oh, we're going to find out. I got you. Remember, everything. Remember what the scripture said in 1 Peter 4 and 11. If any man speak, he has to speak the word of God. That way, I can't say you lie because you told God. God word. Exactly. You're trying to vote. Exactly. Yeah. Don't vote. Exactly. Yeah. Pray at God. But God's word, God's word, he's going to be the one that tells you. That's, That's right. But to fear the Lord thy God. You got fear God. To walk in all his ways. Walk in his ways. And to love him. To love him. And to serve the and Lord serve thy him. God. So, follow God, keep all his ways, love him, serve him. Right? How do we do it? Read. With all thy heart and with all thy soul. Yo, you got to do it compassionately with all your heart and all your soul. How do you do it? To keep the commandments of the Lord. How? To keep the commandments of the Lord. That's a commandment. How, how, how do I do it? Because, like, it, it, it be times I be depressed, bro. I be depressed. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, it feel like in ways, you know, I can't make it. But what I always do, I get on my knees and I call on God, bro. I'm a, I call on the Lord, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm going to show you how you do it. I ain't going to lie. The, 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 image, the image will fool you. You know what I'm saying? But I, I put everything in his hands, man. And he been having me. I'm going to show you. I'm going to have my brother, have my brother help y'all out and teach y'all. First King, because your question is, how do I repent? How do I start to change this and serve him love? How do I start to keep his commandments? Where's the starting step? First Kings, chapter 8, verse 46. Read. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not. So there's no man of Israel that did not commit sin. Read. And thou be angry with them. And God be angry with us. Read. And deliver them to the enemy. That's what happened in slavery. That's during the curses of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. When God gets angry, somebody either dying or going to slavery. We went to slavery. Tornado. Read. So that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy far or near. So the land that we was brought in today is America. This isn't our homeland. We right. work nine to five. Right. We barely get bills paid, correct? Right. Read. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. So bethink means to remember yourself. If we remember ourselves where? In the land where they would carry captives. So if we remember ourselves in America, if we remember ourselves in the Caribbean, if we remember ourselves scattered in Brazil, right. if we remember ourselves scattered in Africa, if we remember ourselves in scattered in Asia and Russia, right. then read and repent. And repent. Repent means to turn back to the Heavenly Father. That's right. So if we turn back to God, meaning keep his law, read, and make supplication and make prayer, like you were saying, bro, that's the only way he's going to hear that, when we're in the midst of repentance. You see that? Read. Unto thee in the land of them that carry them captives, saying, we have sinned. So we have to take the responsibility as a nation to say that, we committed well, the wickedness. Us as a people, we got to change our mindset to be adults. Right. An adult take accountability of their own actions, do they right. not? Exactly. So God is really, he's teaching us to be an adult. He's, and Spiritual. is that it on that? Read on. I'm going to show you why. Read. And have done perversely. Have done everything against his commandments. Read. We have committed wickedness. Read. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul. So the heart means come back to the Bible. Come right. back to the knowledge of the Bible. With your soul, that's your being. That means you're actually performing right. what the Bible is saying. Read. In the land of their enemies, which led them away captive. So this land was actually taken from our brothers, Gad. That's the so-called Native yeah, Americans yeah, of today. Yeah. Those are our brothers. It was taken from them by who? White men. So-called white man, right? Uh, Christopher man. Columbus <laughs> and the conquistadors took of uh, our other brothers, Isakar, uh, meaning the so-called Mexicans, 
and uh, the so-called Puerto Ricans. They took them. So we all have the same enemy, but they divide us. Yeah. But let's see. And Read. Think we different. And pray to them toward their land. So our land, according to the Bible, is Jerusalem. Let's get that. Hold that. Let's get that. Galatians 4, 26. Bring it up. Let's get it. Because we as a people have to know who we are. As a people, we was destroyed. Utterly. Totally over here. We don't even know who we are. We call ourselves colors and not the people. They're black. That's we right. call ourselves black. That's I'm right. brown. I'm this, I'm that. Hebrew. But we're not calling ourselves Hebrew. the children of God. Yeah. But that's the point. They want you to forget that you are a child of God. Because you know what? If you know that you're a child of God. I ain't taking none of this crap they give. Exactly. That means you want rulership. You don't want to take these crumbs no more. You want to take it back. Read. Galatians chapter 4 verse 26. Read. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. All the nations. Hey, brother and sister, I hope y'all listening. All the nations on the planet are not fighting over Africa. Right. They're fighting over Jerusalem. They're fighting over Jerusalem. They're fighting over Jerusalem. Fight. Where you from? Which is the mother country. of us all. Which is the what? The Which is the mother of us all. So Jerusalem is the motherland of the so-called Negro. That's right. And when I mean, when I say Negro, I'm using that term very loosely. Man, for sure. Because a Negro yeah. people is only of the 12 tribes of Jacob. That's right. Meaning, the so-called Hispanics. Hey, they go real for real. And the so-called, um, uh, Dominics and your Native and Americans. And people don't because they those, had bro. different bywords for us. Yeah. You had corn nigga for uh, <laughs> the Native Americans. You had bean nigga for the Hispanics. <laughs> and you had just right, just plain Straight nigga, nigga for us. For us. <laughs> well, I'm That's right. We so no that's showing you that the country is all under us. Oh. Okay, quick question. So Pretty what long. is your nationality? My nationality is Turn. That's my name. That, that's your name, not your nationality. Don't nobody that's own me. No, no, no. no. Nationality doesn't mean that you your own. Nationality shows bro, bro, representation home, of where well, you come from. If that's the case, I don't know my ass, my nationality. But only thing I can say, my nationality is Moors. Moors? Okay. Yeah, no more. All right, I can work with that. Give me uh Jeremiah. I don't, I don't have a nationality. My, my nationality not, is Moors. Hey, bro, you're actually speaking volumes right now. I know I, that I'm speaking volumes because I, I don't have I'm a nationality. Not, I like that. We, I want y'all to listen. Because this brother said he could be more, right? No. More is Moore actually you're Arab, a, no, no, no. The it's word Moore. itself just means black. Right. That's what so more means? Yeah. yeah. M-O, what is it? M-O-R-E. Yeah. All That's it means is black. That's right. That's it. Yeah, so black. you're calling yourself another derivative of oh, black or bro, we are yeah. what? Now I know we are after all. I'm going to show you. Read. Read. Jeremiah Read. chapter 17 Read. and verse 4. Read. Read. And thou, <laughs> even Read. thyself, <laughs> shall discontinue from thy inheritance. So, look, look, look. Hey, brother, you, brother, brother, hold on, hold on. Because when you, you when you start to get into language, white men don't create nothing. The Bible says that. I know. The, the the man that created Russia was actually a Negro. That's right. right. Yeah. It was not the white man. It's very few of us. It, it, the the music that we listen to, that the classical music was That's Negroes. Us. Right. Negro. That's that was sir. us. So hold on. Sir. So all those things don't say that. Uh, don't give so much credit to the, the so-called white man. man. He doesn't. Uh, Jeremiah uh, chapter seventeen and verse four. Read on. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy inheritance. So the children of Israel was already prophesied to discontinue or to stop doing their heritage. Right. Your heritage is uh, how you dress, what you eat, what holidays do you celebrate. That goes into your heritage. I don't believe in Lord life. But that's the thing I can tell. If you don't believe in something, that means that there's no action behind it. I do believe in something. I believe in Psalms. Psalms chapter 119, verse 111. Now look, look at what the heritage is. Read. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever. So God's testimonies is his law, statutes, and commandments. David is saying that I have yeah. taken those yeah. things yeah. as an heritage yeah. Yeah. forever. In Jeremiah, it said that we're going to be discontinued or stop performing our heritage. That's saying, that's simply saying we was going to stop doing God's law. Sir. 
That's it. Is there going to be a race war? If we was going to stop doing that. There's going to be a race war. Hey, brother. Is Samson, Samson the seven lock? So, with, with not doing God's law, now it puts us in a bind. It puts us in the midst of breaking his law. So that means we're in a system that's going to force us to break this law. Right. That's the way the system is set up. That's what I was talking to you earlier, sis, about just something as simple as the dress code. If we were to apply that, you know how many uh, spirits you get out of the community? Right. Brothers won't be lusting at the system no more. That's they're covering right. everything up. They're being very modest. They're like, oh, nice, nice dress, sister. Instead of looking at her curves. You don't know what kind of body she got. They she don't. Covered, right? That's right. I've been surprised many a time. Because <laughs> the girl was coming up and then one day you right. go on a date. Oh my goodness, I did not know something, you had that. Something as simple as covering up. You have to, uh, just that simple law can change our community mindset right. overnight. Right. But that's why we are here, to show you how to change. Because we can't be, we're not, we can't be here we can't do that. So we're not, we're, we're practicing what we preach. We actually walk it. Right. We don't, we ain't telling you one thing and we doing another. We ain't doing that. All right? Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org